This video covers section 5.5, which is titled Alternating Series. And what's significant about the test we're going to cover in this section, which is called the Alternating Series Test, um, we also call it the AST, what's interesting about it is what we've done so far is we've only looked at series that have primarily positive terms. And so the AST deals with how to tell if a series that um, has alternating terms between positive and negative, whether a series like that converges. And so um, that's what we're going to look at in the first video. And then in the second video, we're going to talk, to, we're going to define two different types of convergence. We're going to talk about absolute convergence and conditional convergence. So let's jump into the alternating series test. Um, notice that um, right here in the definition, it kind of gives two different forms for an alternating series. Um, the first one looks like this, and the second one looks like this. The only main difference between these two forms is that the first one starts with a positive term, right? That term's positive. And then the second one starts with a negative term. So alternating series can be either way. They can either start positive or start negative, but with either one, they alternate between positive and negative. The other thing you should notice about either one of these forms is there's kind of two parts to it, right? So there's the negative one to the n power. The other one has negative one to the n plus one. And then they both have a b to the n part. So you want to, when we're kind of going through the AST, alternating series test, we want to kind of separate that b of n from the negative one to the power. Because that's going to be part of how we determine whether an alternating series converges. So looking at theorem 5.13, it lays out what the alternating series test is. And it says an alternating series has the form, and then it lists both of those forms that we put in the definition above, right? This is the first form and then the second form. So it could be one that starts positive or starts negative. And then it says there's two requirements for a series that is alternating to converge. And the first one says that um, b sub n plus 1 has to be less than or equal to b sub n. Well, what's that really saying? It's saying that the series, the b sub n part, so if you strip away the negative 1 to the n plus 1 power, if you strip that away and just look at what's left, if you just look at the b to the n, it's really saying that that part has to be decreasing. So this is really saying that b sub n is decreasing. All right, and then the second part says that the limit of b sub n as n approaches infinity has to be zero. So not only is it decreasing, but it, the terms have to approach zero. Before we do an example, there's actually a couple of notes here, and these notes are very important. The first one that says that the AST only tells us whether a series converges. So it never tells us diverge. It doesn't say anything about the sum. It just tells us, does a series converge? The second thing is that the AST requires that B sub n eventually decrease. So it doesn't have to be decreasing the whole time. It's just that it eventually decreases. So it could start out increasing, and then as n approaches infinity, as n gets bigger, then it eventually will decrease on n. And then the third thing is that if, and this is important, if the AST does fail, and if it fails because the limit is not zero of B sub n, then almost every time we can use the divergence test to prove that it diverges. So if the limit doesn't approach zero, most often it will diverge, and that can be shown by the divergence test. Remember, the divergence test just says that we have to show that the limit is equal to some constant other than zero or that the limit does not exist. And most of the time we're going to see that the limit does not exist is what we're going to show. So, because remember it's alternating back and forth. So, for example, it could the limit of that could alternate back and forth between positive one and negative one, positive one and negative one. That's going to diverge. All right. So, example one. There's three parts to this. We're going to do all three parts. It has to do with telling if a series converges or diverges, and you'll notice all of these are alternating series. So the first one, remember, we need, there's two requirements. 
two requirements are we got to show the beast event is decreasing and we need to take its limit as n approaches infinity. So the first thing we're going to do is check the two requirements of the AST. Okay, first requirement. Does the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n equals 0. And remember, when we're doing the AST, we want to always strip away the negative 1 to the power part. We're just looking at what's left. So if you take the if you take the negative 1 to the n minus 1 out, all that's left is 1 basically over n. And so we're taking the limit of that, and of course, as n gets really big, this becomes 1 over infinity, which, yes, that is 0. So the first requirement is met. The second requirement is we need to show that b sub n is decreasing. And the way that they list it here is showing that b sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n. Well, in this case, b sub n plus 1 is going to be 1 over n plus 1. Remember, b sub n is 1 over n. And so b sub n plus 1 is 1 over n plus 1. And we want to compare that with b sub n. And since the fraction on the left is smaller, right, it is smaller because the denominator is bigger. So that is going to be less than 1 over n for all n. And we can say greater than or equal to 1. Yeah. So in every term, term by term, whether it's starting with n equals 1 or 2 or 3, the fraction on the left is always smaller than the one on the right, which means that b sub n is decreasing. So there were two requirements. It, the limit had to approach 0 and it had to be decreasing. They're both true. So that's all you have to do for the AST. So we can make a statement, thus, series converges by what? Remember, we always say why, by the AST. And we proved it by showing that the two requirements were met. Now, this series is similar to one that we did at the um, beginning of this chapter. If you'll remember the harmonic series, do you remember what that one looked like? The harmonic series says that the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, that series is divergent. And this series looks very much like that one, right? Because if you strip away the negative 1 to the n power, it's 1 over n is less. So it looks harmonic, but it's alternating. So um, what we can call this series, this one actually has a name, it's called the alternating harmonic series. And the alternating harmonic series is convergent. So we say note the alternating harmonic series. converges. All right, that does it for part A. Let's go ahead and look at part B. So we again are going to check our requirements. So the first one is we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity. And remember, we strip away the negative 1 to the n power part. So what's left? We're left with n squared over n squared plus 5. And, you know, there's different ways of thinking about a limit like this. Um, you could use L'Hopital's rule a couple times because we get infinity over infinity. One easy way to just kind of remember these things is if you look at the highest power of n in both the numerator and the, the denominator, if you just look at those terms, so if we just look at the n squared terms, 
then you can just take the ratio of their coefficients. And so this is, since this is one n squared and one n squared, we can say that this limit is gonna be one over one. And so that means the limit of this is one. Well, what was the requirement for the AST? That limit had to be zero, right? But that's not the case here. We don't get limit of zero. We don't get a limit of zero. So what does that mean about the AST? Well, the first requirement is not met. So we can say the AST, the alternating series test, fails. And you remember what we do? As soon as the AST fails for that reason, the limit as n approaches infinity is not equal to zero, what do we do? Well, we said in a note on the previous page, remember we said if the AST fails because the limit of B sub n is not equal to zero, then we usually show the series diverges by the divergence test. And so now we don't strip away the negative one to the n part, we include that. So what we're gonna do is we will show the series diverges using the divergence test. So we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times n squared over n squared plus 5. Now, here's the thing. We already know did, we just showed that the n squared over n plus 5, we just showed that that approach is 1, right? So what you essentially get here is we get the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1. Well, negative 1 to the n just alternates. It alternates back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. If we multiply that about, that whole thing by 1, this is just going to alternate back and forth. This entire limit is going to alternate back and forth. Negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1, positive 1. And what do we say about limits that just bounce back and forth between a positive and a negative, but they don't decrease? We say that those limits do not exist. So that limit does not exist. And... The divergence test says if we get a con if we get a limit that is a constant other than zero or a limit that does not exist, then it diverges. So we can say that our series negative one to the n times n squared over n squared plus five diverges by the divergence test. And that's all there is to this problem. These problems are actually pretty simple. It's either you show the two things that are needed, the two requirements that are needed for the AST, or if the one fails, then you just use the divergence test. Let's do one more here. Now C is a little bit more difficult because it doesn't give us a formula. So we first need to come up with a formula for our particular series. And it's not too bad though. So notice that first of all, it is alternating. And let's go back and look at our two forms. We have negative one to the, we have negative one to the n plus one, and then we have negative one to the n. When it's negative one to the n plus one, it starts with a positive term. When it's negative one to the n, it starts with a negative term. So we're starting with a negative term. So we can go we can go negative one to the n, n equals one to infinity. We're starting with a negative term. And it's pretty simple because notice the top is just powers of or not powers of two, it's multiples of two, right? So first one is two times one, then we have two times Right here we have 2 times 1, this is 2 times 2, this is 2 times 3. So what we really have there is 
the numerator is 2 times n. And then in the denominator, they're increasing by 1 every time, right? So it goes from 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9. Each time it increases by 1. And it starts with, I would say, 4 plus 1, right? So we could say 4 plus n. 4 plus n, when n equals 1, is going to give you 5. When n equals 2, is going to give you 6, and so on. So, what do we have? We have our alternating series, right? This is a alternating series. What do we do first? Well, the first thing we should do is try to show that the AST is true, right? We should try to take the limit as n approaches infinity of our b sub n. So we strip away the negative one at the n, and what's left is 2n over 4 plus n. And here our highest power of n is just n to the first power, so we can take a look at we have basically 2 to the 2 times n over n. The limit of that is going to be 2 over 1 or 2, which again is not equal to 0. So does the AST hold? the first requirement? No, the AST again fails. What do we do? Test for divergence, right? So we take now the limit of the entire thing. We take the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times 2n over 4 plus n, which is the limit of negative 1 to the n times 2, which again does not exist. So it's just bouncing back and forth between positive 2 and negative 2. And so we say thus, negative 2 fifths plus 4 sixths minus 6 sevenths plus 8 eighths minus 10 ninths plus dot 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 diverges by the divergence test. And that's it. That's how we use the AST to tell if a alternating series converges. And remember, if it diverges, we or if, that, if it fails to meet the requirements of the AST, we can use the test for divergence or the divergence test. All right, we're going to have one more video, so I'll see you in the next video.